Once again, thank you very much to the organizers. Uh, so um, what I'm going to speak about uh, is the following. So for Lie algebraic, there are two notions of morphism. One is known as Lie algebraic morphism, and the other is known as Lie algebraic comorphism. And both are were introduced by Higgins uh, Mackenzie. And uh, well, obviously, then the two, two notions, uh, the natural question is which one is better and which one is more natural. Actually, well, the correct answer is both. but. The, Applied to different situations. And uh, comorphisms, as the particulars argued by Alberto Catania, uh, uh, that's uh, very, um, how to say, natural in the context of Poisson geometry. So they're related uh, to Poisson maps, so there's a certain duality under uh, two functorial uh, constructions, which I will uh, uh, recall. And uh, what, uh, what is done here? So we introduce a new notion, uh, which is, uh, well, kind of similar. Uh, well, a generalization of uh, comorphism to the L infinity context. So for L infinity algebraids. And it turned out it's not entirely obvious. So because we, we actually have two slightly different versions of, of this notion. One is uh, more complicated, one, one that is more obvious. And, and we establish, we, we're able uh, to generalize this known relations uh, for Lie algebraids and Poisson manifolds to the case of L infinity algebraids and P infinity manifolds. And this is a, a joint work with uh, my student Sam Brady, which is in progress. Well, it's almost done, but there are various details to be worked out. So let, let me uh, remind uh, general, general nonsense, so to say. So what, what as uh, comorphism uh, for fiber bundles. Actually, just for uh, fiber bundles or vector bundles uh, in particular, uh, different people depend on, on different, well, needs uh, according to the problem. So they consider two notions of morphism. One simply is a just, well, square, commutative square, and well, it's at the top here, right? And, uh, but unfortunately, uh, this notion uh, allows to pull back functions on total spaces, but not sections. And a competing parallel notion, uh, which some people still call morphism, still not comorphism, uh, uh, is more, looks more complicated, but it actually is uh, completely symmetric if one properly looks at the first notion. So one uh, can decompose this uh, commutative square uh, into, a kind of a diagram of pullback related with a pullback bundle, uh, where the, uh, the um, arrow at the top is identical on the fibers. Right. And, and then all information about uh, the morphism itself, as far as the total spaces are considered, so is in the uh, in this arrow where you have a, a mapping of the fixed base. A, a, fiber, a fiber bundle a mapping uh, from uh, a given uh, fiber bundle to pullback bundle. And now if you view morphisms of fiber bundles this way, then comorphism will be exactly the same, but uh, now the role of pullback uh, and the other bundle uh, is reversed. You have a, a mapping from a pullback bundle. Uh, now, one may argue uh, which, uh, well, direction of errors one should pick, and uh, in the literature, people pick different directions. Uh, so, uh, incidentally, for example, of applications, uh, because this allows to pull back, um, to have a ma mapping of sections, well, I said pull back, actually, push, push forward in my convention, and say in the book, uh, Gimin Sternberg, uh, geometric asymptotics. This exactly is defined to be the proper notion of morphisms of vector bundles, exactly because they, they work with two differential operators acting on sections of vector bundles and the, the, the need for neutrality for sections, right? And of course, this the second is done purely algebraically, uh, just for models. There's an L for models over, L, well, over different algebras. Okay, so this is. Uh, kind of well known but it's good to recall and then now uh well uh again the fact that maybe regardless folklore was uh clearly uh, put down by higgins um, in higgins mckenzie work in 1993 that if uh you do this for vector bundles uh, by passing to the dual bundle you can convert morphisms to comorphisms and comorphisms to morphisms well the, the opposite direction 
uh, in opposite direction uh, in my convention of errors. Some other people take other convention, then it will be just the same same direction. But I'm sticking to the idea that you you simplest example is vector spaces, and for vector space you pass to the dual space, and then errors are reversed. Okay, and now they introduce fundamental notion, uh, this little Jubroid comorphism. Now, a comorphism vector bundles uh, is a, a little Jubroid comorphism if uh, first it preserves the brackets, so homomorphism of uh, Lie algebras. And also, there is a relation for anchors. So, if you have a section and you take the push forward of your section, then uh, uh, to every section corresponds a vector field. Uh, with uh, using applying the anchor, and this vector fields must be related or intertwined by the map of the basis. Okay, and again, this can be uh, done uh, in tidal algebraically, and this I think was estab established by Hübschman, right? And uh, well, uh, for uh, if you want to compare with algebraic morphisms, uh, then it is not so easy to do it in terms of sections, but it's uh, the easiest way to do it in terms of supergeometry. Then you can consider you can consider uh, the corresponding vector bundles with the reverse parity, and then they are defined by uh, homological vector fields. And then algebraic morphism is a Q map. One also can, uh, of course, explain the notion of comorphism in terms of homological vector fields. This will be done later, uh, well, in the more general context when I will uh, give the L infinity uh, um, version. Okay. Uh, why comorphism is also important? Because actions, actually, I explained in terms of comorphism. Action of a Lie algebraic on something is a comorphism into the tangent, uh, tangent algebraic. Right, actually, to the section corresponds vector fields, which infinitesimal generators of your action. Like, uh, okay, and uh, and now uh, there are two fundamental theorems, simple but fundamental theorems, uh, which establish relation between Lie algebraic comorphisms and uh, Poisson geometry. First of all, uh, remember that uh, every Lie algebraic can be viewed well in different manifestations, so to say, structure and sections. Uh, Lee Poisson bracket on the dual bundle and Lee Houghton, odd, it means odd Poisson bracket on the anti dual, uh, uh, parity reversed uh, dual, right? And all structures, can, well, everything you can, what you can do should be, a, uh, should be possible to be formulated in all these manifestations, right? And so if you have a vector bundle comorphism of a Lee algebraids, uh, if it is Lie algebraic comorphism, then the dual vector bundle morphism will be Poisson map. And actually, if and only if. And conversely, the same. Um, and the same for Lee Houghton brackets on the anti duals. Uh, so, this is one fundamental relation. Another fundamental relation is that if you have just Poisson manifolds, then we know that uh, it was uh, actually in one of the earlier talks one of the equivalent uh, structures for a Poisson structure on M is a Kazul bracket on differential forms, which is one of the manifestations of the cotangent, cotangent Lie algebraic. Right, and again, so if I have a morphism of well, Poisson manifolds, so that means map that pull back uh, preserves uh, brackets, uh, then the corresponding cotangent, then they have cotangent comorphism, and this cotangent comorphism turns out to be a Lie algebraic comorphism, right? In well, in particular, uh, well, in one of the manifestations, that means the pullback of differential forms uh, will preserve Kazut brackets. Okay, and now now our task is to convert everything you know, to an infinite world, right? Or infinity, whatever world. Uh, well, let's recall the notion of the uh, L infinity algebraic. So it's well, uh, the, again, uh, uh, I'll be using a convention where L infinity algebraic is a direct generalization of Lie algebraic. So therefore, the brackets uh, well uh, are alternating parities and anti-symmetric. So it is a vector bundle which you may think in the super world. So everything are super manifolds. If needed, if needed, you may also uh, have some assume some z gradient which may be uh, independent on z two gradient. But for science, we need on the z two, and so we have a structure L infinity algebra on sections, and also there are. Uh, infinite sequence of uh, high analogs of anchors, uh, which are important for, uh, well, for the Leibniz rule. So if you multiply a section by a function, you have a Leibniz rule where a high anchor, well, and particular anchor of many arguments pops up. And this everything uh, can be encoded in a single piece of structure, namely homological uh, vector field, uh, which lives on the total space with a reverse parity. And 
odd squares to zero. And you, if you um, expanded its formal vector field and you can expand it uh, with respect to natural degree, Z degree, which is given by the linear structure in the vector bundle. So you have a pieces, well, you have three pieces written here. Actually, there's no high pieces. There are a lot of low order pieces. And uh, in the one of the previous talk talks, uh, well, uh, with this two early uh, low order pieces will correspond to uh, courage or whatever. It is very, uh, sometimes it is convenient to assume that you don't have a slow order pieces at all. So you start from just uh, this third term here, which corresponds to just a Lie algebra structure plus high order, well, homotopy, homotopy, uh, extra things. And uh, uh, tilde means parity. So the standard, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm sticking, this notation was introduced by Manin years ago. So when we have a uh, super world, you know, that two gradient is the, uh, called parity is denoted by tilde of the object instead of this modulus or whatever. Thank you. Uh, is the anchor an L infinity morphism? Yes. Well, if you assemble, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. The, uh, quick answer is yes. Yes. So, and a nice way of seeing this, uh, you can as assemble all high anchors into a single map, which is a nonlinear map uh, from pi a or pi a one more precisely to pi pi t m. And this, uh, this is uh, well, a Q map. So it can be used with homological active fields. Right, and so now, well, uh, you anticipated my next slide. Uh, so, uh, because I haven't told you what is L infinity morphism, L infinity morphism is exactly in this language is the Q map. So uh, we describe L infinity algebraids as a Q manifolds and uh, say uh, you have a mapping of Q manifolds and which uh, intertwines uh, correspond homological active fields, right? And well, this is spelled out here. So if we have, uh, well, this, if you write this in coordinates, so um, so this is a linear part. Well, it's some uh, the essential thing starts from well quadratic part. So this is like first homotopy, extra homotopy term, and uh, and this uh, formulas tell you exactly uh, well how how this, what, what these functions should satisfy uh, to be uh, q-morphism and that means anything okay uh, now we're going to compare we we're going to introduce the notion of co-morphism and compare these equations with what we'll go uh, we'll get there uh, right uh, so suppose again we have uh, two alien infinity algebraids and suppose we now we're given a well a vector bundle co-morphism so that means that means one mapping is uh, sorry one error goes in the opposite direction, right? So in coordinates, well, you see what is easier is easiest to, under, to understand. So you have a map map of the basis, well, which goes in the incidental opposite direction, and then uh, the map on fibers, you see instead of x, which was before, now you have y, and that, that exactly corresponds. You have a map from a pullback bundle, not two pullback bundles. From and now uh, there is a theory which generalizes a known statement, which I think due to Mackenzie or maybe partly folklore, uh, that any uh, well, uh, Lie algebra homomorphism can be can be explained as having a unique uh, uh, Lie algebra structure on the um, induced in the pullback bundle, right? And if we exactly uh, just pull this as a condition, put this as a condition, then but in terms of homological vector fields. So uh, if there's homological vector fields that isn't uh, related with the given vector fields specifying the structure in A and the structure in B, then it is unique and uh, it, it is very easily, uh, very easy to write down the explicit form of that. And, and this by definition will be an infinity comorphism. And this is a generalization uh, of what we have uh, for a Lie algebra case. And in particular, uh, well, in well examples, um, for example, uh, it's uh, well it, it induces a push forward of sections which now will be nonlinear, but it's fine because we can expand it and the Taylor coefficients of the expansion will give you well high components of an infinity map. And the claim is then the push forward of sections will be an infinity 
uh, L infinity uh, morphism uh, over correspond L infinity algebras. And if you think about L infinity algebras, you need to describe them somehow. And uh, a nice way of describing the corresponding algebra with the homological vector field, which now infinite dimensional, which lives on the total, well, on the space of sections. So you see this homological vector fields and using this expression, one can easily prove this claim. And an, an example, which is, well, I guess is useful for applications. What is an action, uh, or infinitesimal action of an infinity algebraoid of some given manifold or supermanifold? Uh, it's uh, an infinity morphism into the tangent, in the tangent bundle. Right, uh, and this can be, of course, translated to the a sequence well, of vector fields uh, which live on our manifolds or supermanifolds and satisfy certain relations. So, and I guess uh, my guess that physicists uh, knew that uh, long ago without knowing this, uh, the name, right? And in particular situations, this was explored by other people. So, I should um, mention here Marco Zambon actually who uh, uh, has a work on uh, infinity actions uh, of uh, uh, Lie algebraids. And uh, I, I should, should say that my own interest to that was prompted by question asked, uh, uh, which Mark asked me, well, some years ago uh, uh, about, uh, well, any infinity actions. And I started to look into that and uh, this partly result, this work partly resulted as, as, as an answer uh, to his question. Um, Right. Um, uh, now, uh, how about these fundamental theorems? Right. Uh, so uh, uh, one needs to be careful because uh, when we, we're in the world of pin-finite manifolds, and pin-finite manifolds are manifolds uh, equipped with a sequence of analogs of Poisson, Poisson's uh, brackets, uh, of alternating parities. Well, um, uh, then what is a pin-finite map? And P infinity map is not an ordinary map as it was one can find can find. And this is exactly a particular uh, case uh, of a thick morphism, uh, a notion that I just uh, came across some year some years ago. and and this uh, thick morphism uh, is is not, as I said, not a point map, right? as Fist would say. So but uh, rather a relation, uh, of the kind very uh, similar to what uh, Alberto uh, Allen and Bernard de Rennes were uh, uh, with very different motivations were considering. So it's canonical relation with, between cotangent, cotangent bundles. But what's important for me, it's uh, described by various particular class of generating functions, which are as close as possible to other maps. And if you have uh, such uh, generalized uh, maps, which are not maps, then you still can have pullback of functions, which is a nonlinear mapping, which is a, uh, a new thing, which is nonlinear map, nonlinear pullbacks. So I, I don't have time, so I, I cannot go uh, into details about that, but this is an interesting thing. But um, for in ordinary Poisson geometry, one can define, one can explain what's the Poisson morphism between Poisson mains in two different ways. One is in terms of um, functions, something that pullback of functions uh, preserves Poisson brackets. And another way is more down to have differential geometric way. So you have a Poisson by vector, which is a tensor field, contravariant tensor field. And then you have two contravariant tensor fields. Uh, then there is no, uh, well, push forward or pullbacks, but then I have five minutes. Uh, uh, so, but, uh, but one can say when they're related, it's um, generalization of the, well, be, related or intertwining, um, being intertwined for vector fields. And then, so uh, one can say that uh, a map is a Poisson map if these contravariant tensor fields are related by this map. Okay, now in the world, and but this is very easy to check these two things are equivalent. Now in the world of thick morphisms, so it becomes less obvious. So one, one can define what is P-infinity morphism as a thick morphism such that the, the generating function described as thick morphism satisfies, well, certain hamilton jacobi equation, which uh, corresponds to, uh, well, uh, corresponds to this, in the ordinary case, uh, the relation the, uh, being into the, well, for Poisson tensors, tensors, tensors to be intertwined. Okay. And then the theorem is that if this relation is satisfied, if it has hamilton jacobi equation, then on the level of functions, you get L-infinity morphism 
uh, between, uh, well, these high Poisson brackets. Okay, so this was done in some other work. So I'm just explaining the background for that. And then the claim is that here again, we can uh, ha have an analog, an analog of the classical statement. So we have comorphism of infinity algebraids, then for the dual uh, bundles, uh, you will get uh, P infinity or S infinity for odd version uh, morphisms that gives, in particular, L infinity morphisms on functions. In a way, it's a nonlinear extension from generators of L infinity morphism of sections. Okay. And now, uh, uh, but then there is a second theorem, theorem B, so to say. You are given from Poisson manifolds to, to algebraids. So you are given P infinity manifolds, and you have cotangent. Uh, algebraids, L infinity algebraids, and you want uh, from a uh, Poisson map, this means P infinity map, get uh, L infinity comorphism. Unfortunately, this doesn't work exactly this way, and we need some further generalization. And this further generalization uh, comes from some technicalities. Uh, well, we need to define uh, define well, first of all, we need to, 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 to speak about thick morphisms. And we're, we're speaking about thick morphisms of vector bundles. So for thick morphisms of vector bundles, there's a kind of a notion of linear, uh, fiberwise linearity. Well, this can be described in terms of graded, well, in particular weights. But, but what's important, uh, linearity means that you, you, you have nonlinear mappings, but some, uh, say, linear functions are preserved. So linear functions are mapped to linear functions in a nonlinear way. This is a bit weird. And so we can we need to, um, to define a particular class of thick morphisms. And then the um, co-morphism, well, particular example of such uh, thick morphisms are given by a tangent morphism correspond to thick morphism. Well, recall what we need what, all this for. So suppose you have a P infinity map. So this is a thick morphism. So we, we need to consider tangent, well, an elk of tangent map, which will be again thick morphism, and, and then want to dualize. And, and when we dualize, we are supposed to get a comorphism, but not in the previous sense. We get a comorphism in a well, more general sense, and which, which, which is the correct notion. So I had to uh, introduce some in steps. And now, so this is uh, the definition. So it is a canonical relation. Um, well, it, again, particular kind of, because time is run out. Uh, so it's a particular type of a canonical relation between uh, cotangent, uh, uh, cotangent bundles uh, specified by generating a function of a special form not like for ordinary thick, uh, thick morphism, or different form, different choice, dif different generating functions differ by choice of independent uh, variables. And, and this is defined by particular choice of independent variables. And particular ordinary comorphism or, or, uh, are described in the ordinary comorphism vector bonds are described this way. So they're just special case. Okay, and push forward of sections is defined and which is a nonlinear mapping. Okay, and, and then uh, the theorem is that there's error reversing isomorphism between two categories of vector bundles with particular class of thick morphism, which are called dualizable, and thick comorphism as errors. And you can look before uh, just uh, I pass to the next slide to the relation between generating functions. So they look almost the same. Actually, there, there are uh, the same up to change of variables, uh, which is given by so-called Mackenzie shoe transformation. Right. So these are uh, nature identification of cotangent bundles of dual vector bundles. And if you apply that to here, uh, one generating function will translate to another generating function. Okay, and then we uh, happily, well, uh, one can introduce now using such, this notion of comorphism vector bundles uh, introduced in a natural way, what's L infinity map, uh, an infinity version, and then we have the statement. So analog of theorem uh, B. Uh, so if I have P infinity morphism of P infinity manifolds, then cotangent comorphism is L infinity comorphism of cotangent L infinity algebraids. Well, in particular, in one of the manifestations, you have high Kazul brackets 
which exactly on differential forms, which exactly described this L infinity cotangent uh, stru cotangent algebraic structure, and then have P infinity map, which preserves functions, preserves brackets of functions in L infinity sense, and then the pullback, nonlinear pullback on differential forms will again preserve in L infinity sense high causal brackets. And so this is our main statement. And now let me just uh, finish by saying that I want to dedicate this talk to member of Kirill McKenzie, who was a great man, who just made important fundamental contributions to the theory. A lot, a lot of stuff that we described here, in, uh, well, Lee algebraic, Lee group points, Poisson, various bracket geometry. And I was like three years ago, uh, he passed away around a little bit less than three years ago. And it's a pity that he's not here, so, but let me just commemorate him uh, in my talk. Is there a question? I guess since you are you are L infinity algebra is not just NQ, right? It's not uh, oh, sorry. You are L infinity algebra is not NQ, not you mean just the NQ. The corresponding super manifold is a, not NQ. In not general, just, I don't right? assume that. Well, you can restrict to this case, but you don't have to. Right. So it, it probably is Z grade. It does not only concentrate on the positive well, uh, well, so, well you don't have to assume that uh, that grade yeah, yeah. So if, if you, you have that grade yeah, you may yeah. have it and all the structures yeah. can be made well working compatible with that and but depending on which grade you use you may have two gradings right incidentally here we implicitly used in the definition we used yeah. uh, the second uh, z grading so uh, this when you look at this form uh all these generating functions the generating functions uh, have uh, well weight one uh, in respect to uh, q. If you see well, in the first one q and u, and the second uh, q q q mu and 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 pi, and this corresponds to gradients that exist on the uh, cotangent bundle of a vector bundle, right? Because it's a double double vector bundle, and you have two gradients. So so my idea is that when you need the gradient, you may have several, and you may use it, right? You don't have to tie it with the, uh, the two. Uh, yeah. Does it make sense? Mm, Why well, you like? I don't quite understand. I, but no, NQ two, is an example, right? But but you have like a mm. no. You no. see, the two uh, they they're, they're, they have different roles. The two parrot is responsible for signs, and Z is a counting device, and you may count in different ways. But they need to be compatible, I think. They may be compatible in the simplest case. Uh, as we say, with no fermions. So when you have theory without fermions, so uh, then uh, you, 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 Z2 comes from Z. But if you have fermions, so you, for example, have differential forms. Well, in some, in the most naive sense, you, you, have, you may have a one form which is even, or two form which is odd, and which is naturally pops up if you have fermionic coordinates from the start. Yeah, I just want to understand your yeah. nature. We yeah, 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 we can discuss it. Yes, yes. So it, it, there's a question on Zoom by, by Dima. Yeah. Yes. So Dima. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, hi. Um, so yeah, my question. So you mentioned double vector bundles, but here mm -hmm. you're talking about something else. So you have uh, kind of like the same class of objects, and then uh, you have two different category structures. And so you have these morphisms, which you can compose and they form a category, and then you have uh, comorphisms, which you know, likewise form a category. So, is there any relation between those two category structures, like you know, like a double category? I mean, uh, apart from uh, saying that over the same base, they're, they're the same. <laughs> well, first of all, Dima, we they the same when you uh, restrict to the case of a single, the same base and identity on the base. Then, right. more apart from that. That, that, that's you know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but as for high categorical structure, I'm completely ignoramus, so I cannot tell anything. But uh, you, you will have double uh, double vector bundles here because we're talking about cotangents. And as soon as you have vector, well, you know very well, then you have vector bundle. Cotangent will be double uh, double vector bundle. Th that's why you have two gradients. 
Right. Well, double vector bundles, when you have, uh, well, it, 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 uh, are constructed by using uh, only vector bundle morphisms and not comorphisms, right? And they do form a double category. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if there is like anything like, well, if you can form squares with like horizontal layers being morphisms and vertical comorphisms, let's say, and you can like oh, okay, bring well. them together in some way. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. So just morphism will be a, a, a square or rather some uh, high dimensional, well, three dimensional thing. You have one square, you have another square, you have errors like that. And this is just, just one morphism. But how you have cells, how do you have cells, two cells? Well, we don't have time, as I see, so yeah. we need to. Uh, we can talk with you. <laughs> we probably should stop here. And so we ask, thank that again. Thank you.